$4 million worth of membrane equipment from this rack to the end of the RO racks. Uh, the membrane filtration was about, uh, about half of that. So uh, the backwash recovery, uh, I would say that each rack is about, uh, this one is probably $600,000 and the uh, salt water rack uh, is about eight hundred. It is 1,000 gallons a minute for the Palmer River. Mm -hmm. uh, 1,000 gallons a minute for the Vinicum Wellfield. Uh, and uh, then it is uh, about uh, 1,500 gallons a minute uh, for the Palmer River. Uh, because what's going to happen here is we are going to pump 4 million gallons a day from the Palmer River. And uh, at lowest recovery, that's about 30%, we'll be picking up 1.2 million gallons per day. Uh, interesting thing about um, uh, this membrane filtration system is part of its operation, and it has uh, an enormous supervisory control system, uh, but there is something known as an integrity test, where every 30 minutes, uh, its supervisory control system is looking at the membranes to see if they are leaking. Because if we had a sample membrane here, it would look like a bunch of tubular spaghetti in a large eight inch tube. Mm -hmm. And what happens is the water, the uh, dirty water, the processed water, passes over the outside of those minute tubes and is pushed in through the plastic. And that's how you get the separation, the actual filtration separation. Now, what happens if one of those small tubes ruptures because of pressure, the integrity test will pick that up and there is a process for uh, the plant operators to, uh, to cure that, where we actually take the cover off the membrane because you see that these are Victaulic joints. There are only two bolts. This is temporary. This will be pulled off. The connection, the membrane will be in place. This is for sizing. The membrane will be in place. You pull it out. There'll be valves. You shut the valves off. You pull it out and you take it out and it will be able to identify the membrane by bubbles and there's a process where you put a pin in there with what is essentially super glue. Treated water, treated and strained water from the Palmer River microfiltration system. Then pumped, and you can see the uh, uh, piping, it, it is then pumped into the RO brake tank. And that's that. Yeah, that's uh, that. And the RO brake tank stores uh, treated water in advance of going to the reverse osmosis membranes. Osmosis break tank. It will be fed through another series of strainers. These are much finer strainers than the other strainers. And after it goes through this straining rack, then it's introduced to the reverse osmosis system. And the reverse osmosis system is everything that you see that's a, high, uh, a uh, horizontal uh, membrane. Because there is a, a lineal relationship between salt water concentration and how much pressure you have to apply to remove the salt. Mm -hmm. Because salt water is typically about 30,000 milligrams per liter of salt. With brackish water, uh, we have 14 to 22,000 in the Palmer River. Uh, at 14,000, we'll run about 250 on side, and that is going to be an operator uh, adjusted level. At 22,000 TDS, which is the measure of salt, we will then go to 350 TDS. standing on the clear well and the clear well is a vault that is baffled under the building where the finished water is discharged. Uh, now the, it's sectional, there's one piece just for the Uvinicum well field but the rest of it is for the Palmer River system. 
and uh, that uh, allows for conditioning of the water before it is sent to service. It's also part of the process because it holds water for storage. It's actually 170,000 gallons of storage under this floor that you stand on.